Many people may not remember or know about it, but one of the most frequently discussed topics in the music press in October 1967 was a supposed merger between the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. This may seem like the sort of news the music press invented in order to sell more newspapers. However, both the Beatles and the Stones management confirmed that there had been conversations between Jagger and McCartney about this Beatles-Stones merger. But what was it all about? Here's the story. Despite the much-publicized Beatles vs. Stones rivalry, the two groups maintained a friendly relationship ever since they first met in April 1963, when the Beatles went to see the Stones' life at the Crawdaddy Club in Richmond. However, it seems that they were closer than ever in 1967, as the two bands were seen together on several occasions throughout the year. The news about this Beatles-Stones merger started appearing in the press after Jonathan King spoke about it on his television program. The story made the cover of The Melody Maker, the newspaper reported. The proposed Beatles-Stones merger, revealed at the weekend by Jonathan King on his ITV program Good Morning, is almost certain to take place in the future. But it will be a business merger between the two groups and will not lead to any form of rolling Beatles records. Beatles press officer Tony Barrow said, it's highly possible that the two groups will get together for fresh business ventures. But there is no chance of any sort of cooperation on a record as the two groups are contracted to rival record companies. One idea that they're discussing is obtaining a recording studio where they can each make their own records and possibly record other artists. And there is a possibility of future intriguing schemes. These could include a talent school. A week later, Disc Magazine interviewed Mick Jagger and asked him about it. Jagger said, it's nothing fantastic. Just something Paul and I talked about. We'd like to build the best recording studios in the world. It would be like five years ahead of its time. A record label together is another possibility. A week before, Disc Magazine had already reported about the news. And the magazine asked Pete Townsend and Graham Nash about their opinions on this Beatles-Stones merger idea. Disc reported, Pop's biggest merger, the proposed link-up between the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, received full show business backing this week as other pop names voiced their views. The Who's spokesman Pete Townsend, firm personal friend of the two groups, said, We virtually record ourselves anyway, but the Beatles and the Stones between them, should be able to get one of the best equipped studios in London, which will help the small groups they take on, immensely. These small groups will be able to have the best, instead of the rubbish they often have to put up with. I know of one very promising group who used to get fed up because their recording company would only allow them an hour to do a session, which is hopeless. The Beatles Stones idea, will end all that bullshit. Stones publicist Les Perrin was also asked about it. The publicist said, Disgust was the possibility or advisability of opening a recording studio, but these conversations have not been resolved, and any assumptions should be considered premature. Beatles press officer Tony Barrow commented, They want to organize recordings in a studio of their own, and also record other talent. But this venture of course, would not interfere with their present recording commitments. The talks were very much of an exploratory nature. The Hollies leader Graham Nash, also shared his views about the merger. Nash said, I think the whole thing sounds like a very good idea. There's certainly a lack of facilities on the recording scene here. There are often a lot of problems to overcome before you get what you want. We've already formed our own recording production company for ourselves and to record people. The business could only benefit from what the Beatles and the Stones plan. One of the first projects that was supposed to come out of this merger was an album by Marianne Faithful. The album was going to be produced by Paul McCartney and Mick Jagger and engineered by Glyn Johns. And in fact, a few recording sessions for this album took place in May 1967. Marianne Faithful spoke to the New Musical Express and said, Mick is producing some tracks for a new album for me. You heard one track as you came in, written by the Incredible String Band. Robin and Mike, the Incredible String Band. My Friday evening's footsteps plodding dully through this black town. The song she covered was Painting Box. At the time, both Mick and Marianne and Paul McCartney were very much into the group. McCartney told the press that their album 5,000 Spirits or The Layers of the Onion was his favorite record of 1967. 
In an interview several years later, Marianne Faithful also commented, Part of a very happy time. Mick and I liked them very much. Um, in that period, whenever it was, sort of 67, 68, that sort of bit, that was the first time I heard anybody sound like that. I don't know, it was a charming, charming time. I felt they'd made that record just for me. <laughs> Apart from Painting Box, other songs recorded during those sessions were a cover of With a Little Help from Our Friends by The Beatles, and a song called English Summer written by Jagger and Richards. Sadly, these recordings remain unreleased and they have never even been bootlegged, making these some sort of holy grail of lost recordings from the 60s. It's very likely that the tapes still exist. Hopefully, whoever owns these recordings will release them someday for our listening pleasure.